this next part of my Astley Green series is called Getting Over the Canal Bridge or the Battle for the Canal Bridge. Now, the reason I've called it that is from the colliery yard when they had to export wagons full of coal out to British Railways. They did it across Chat Moss and that was over the canal bridge which had to rise up to allow the boats underneath. That meant there was a steep gradient coming up out of the colliery yard. This was in the autumn of 1969 when Ashley Green was trying to produce as much coal as possible per man shift. And at the time that I visited it, this was a probably a Wednesday afternoon again, they were trying to get as many tons of coal out over that bridge as possible. The problem was that the roadways crisscrossing the colliery yard were being run over by trucks, lorries, full of coal and they were spreading, because it rained that morning, they were spreading kind of slurry over the track, a kind of mud over the track, which caused the engines to lose adhesion, to start slipping as they tried to get up the gradient. After coaling up and watering, Warrior rolls across the mud to couple up to its train of wagons. about 350 tons of coal and with Harry banking at the back the train gets going. Then Harry hits the mud, loses his grip and the train stalls. So it's back down the yard to try again, hoping that some of the mud has been burnt off the rails. All the engines point north towards Walker. As this train is going south, they're pulling backwards for bunker first. The crews don't want to split the train. It's a matter of honour to get a train of this size over the canal. slips to a stand again and Harry at the back gives his all. Walking pace, they get across the bridge and over Chat Moss. The 
other thing that came across to me after these many years looking back at these films was just why those austerity steam engines, those 060 saddle tanks, were so popular. Because they were a pretty ugly looking steam engine. And the reason is, and you can see it in this film, is that they were able to withstand an amazing thrashing in terms of weight they had to pull, slipping and sliding on the track, the juddering effects of the wheels slipping and then getting a grip and then slipping again and getting a grip, putting the sand down, getting a grip. And these engines did this day in and day out without very, with, with very little maintenance. So they were an astonishing steam engine for the time, although they were basic, they were very, very strong.